Hey, my friends, happy Sunday. So good to see you guys. Hey, I hope you've had a beautiful week. It is spring here in my garden, which makes, you know, makes me really happy. So spring, new season, new unit. Are you guys ready for a new one? Now, if you haven't seen some of our old videos, feel free to go back on TVC Kids Nashville. That's our YouTube channel and it's a kids YouTube channel, super safe for you guys. Um, but go back, especially look at our Easter lessons and maybe this one on parable, this one parable, because we're going to be talking about our units called foundations. And we talked about this parable way back and it talks about, do we want to build our house on the rock? or on sand. Do you guys remember? Do you remember all the way back there? Is it better to build your house on a rock or on sand? You're right, it's the rock. Yes, we wanna build our house on the rock. All right, I even put rocks around my flower garden because it's strong. It's gonna keep things holding together. All right, so that's what we're talking about. We're gonna build a strong foundation, like a rock, not like sand that's gonna drift away. All right, so what does that mean? We're gonna be talking about the things that make us strong in our faith. All right, what are some of those things? Maybe you're reading the Bible, yeah? Prayer, going to church, praise and worship, and just building a strong faith. So that's what we're gonna be talking about for the next few weeks. I hope you'll follow along with me and um, let's get started, all right? So I found this little, um, just a little article in this story Bible that I wanted to read to you guys. It's just a little note. It's not even a whole story, but um, it kind of sets us up a little transition from what we just studied on Easter going forward. All right. Now, if you didn't see our Easter lessons, definitely go back and watch those because that's really what our whole foundation is about, is what Jesus did for us on the cross, right? All right. But let me read this to you. See what you think. If you really want to understand the biggest story, God's story, right? Sometimes you need to learn a few new words. Do you guys like learning new words? Yeah? Okay, my son Isaiah, he all through middle school, high school, probably still does it now, he goes and he has his vocabulary word of the day. I hope you guys will do that. Sometimes it's really fun to learn new words. So he's got a big vocabulary because of that. But here's two words that maybe you have heard, maybe you have not. And the words are Jew and Gentile. All right. In the Bible, the Jews were God's special, special people, right? They were the ones who came from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Do you remember learning that? And do you remember how God protected them? Remember Abraham? Um, God told him, he said, you'll have as many descendants as the stars in the sky. Those were the Jewish people. Those were the Israelites we talked about later when we talked about Moses, right? And God gave the law to Moses. They had a king. Their king was David. We're going to talk more about David this fall. So all this ties together. To belong to God had always been about faith. All right. But they were waiting for the Messiah. Do you remember? You guys, we've talked about this for sure. Do you remember they'd waited generations to find the Messiah, to know that the Messiah was coming. They knew he was coming. The prophet Isaiah told him that Jesus was coming. And then finally, when we talked about our Easter stories, they knew it was him, right? All right. But for most of the Bible's big story, the Jews are the ones who knew God's ways and knew God's promises. And the disciples, remember those 12? They were also Jews. And so was Jesus. All right. If you weren't a Jew, you were called a Gentile. So that was people who were raised not in the Jewish faith, not from that lineage. All right. When Jesus came, he made a lot of people upset. Who did he make upset? That was the Pharisees, right? But he also made some people very, very happy. And here's why. Being a Jew didn't mean that, and being a Gentile, being a Jew didn't mean that you were going to always be with Jesus. And being a Gentile didn't keep you out of being with Jesus. All right. So the Pharisees, remember they said to um, Jesus on Palm Sunday, they said, make your people stop, make these people stop worshiping you. And he said, if they stop worshiping me, the rocks will cry out. He was saying everything and everyone in this world is meant to worship me, meant to worship Jesus. All right. God's grace was offered to everyone through Jesus. If your family knew God for thousands of years, you still needed to follow Jesus. So even those Jews whose families from generation to generation and generation followed God still needed to accept and follow Jesus. And 
if your family never knew God before, guess what? You could still follow Jesus. Both needed forgiveness and both needed faith. So the Jews and the Gentiles, those whose families had followed God forever, still needed to follow Jesus. And the Gentiles, those who were just learning about Jesus, just learning about God through Jesus, still needed to follow Jesus. Jesus brought everyone together, and that's where we are today. All right? Every single one of us needs to know and follow Jesus. And for a lot of you, you're dedicated. Your families know Jesus. You're learning about Jesus. That's awesome. But at some point in life, all of us need to pray, ask Jesus into our hearts, and accept and follow him. So if you're ready to do that now, I hope you go get your parents. Stop the video. Go get your parents and just talk to them and say, you know, Mom, I want to follow Jesus. Dad, help me follow Jesus more. And then when you do that, let's just pray together. Are you ready to pray? All right. Lord Jesus, we love you. We ask you to be in our hearts right now. We accept you. We know the story is true. We know that you died for us on the cross to pay for my sin. To pay for my sin, Jesus, you did that. And Lord, I ask that you help me to follow you. Be in my heart. Lord, help me to follow you each day. Lord, I want to follow you. I want to love you. I want to praise you and love you. I do love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I hope you've prayed that prayer. I hope that you'll talk to your mom and dad. Know that Jesus is there for all of us. If you just heard about him today, or you've known him your whole life, he's there for you, and he will be there for you forever when you ask for him to be in your heart. I love you guys, and Jesus surely loves you guys. I hope you have a beautiful week.